Hi everyone, today we're going to do a collage. We're going to create a beautiful, bright, colourful piece of artwork based on the work of Paul Klee. Paul Klee was a, a Swiss born German artist and he was born in 1879 and died in 1940. He's famous for his contributions to Cubism, Expressionism and Surrealism. He had a love of colour and today's artwork will reflect that. Today, all we're going to need is the following. A ruler, some scissors, pencil, and just some, a glue stick. I like a glue stick because we won't, um, we're going to be gluing lots of layers and it's not messy. We can control how much glue we're using. I'm going to be doing my collage on an A3 piece of black paper, card. I actually just bought this from the news agents and cut it down. But you can use white paper, paint it dark blue, paint it black, even just leave it white. But it looks very effective, uh, geometric colours and, and shapes we're going to use on this black card as a back, backdrop. If you're at school, no problems. There's plenty of paper, coloured paper at school. But if you're at home like me, you can buy this colour craft paper just from the local um, choice shop or craft shop. Place. Even the news agents, news agents will sell um, A4 sheets of various colour paper. So I've got some blue, yellow, orange, fluorous, many bright colours as we can because we're going to play with them and mix it up and make a really interesting picture. To create our city collage, the first thing we need to do to create a whole bunch of buildings. Now, we need to make about seven or eight different buildings. And as you can see, we can use different colors, different aspects of how a building would be. The easiest way to start is just with a simple rectangle, triangle roof. And what I like to do is to cut long shapes and fold them, such as the one I've done here. This blue card, I folded it and folded it. Then I would use my scissors to cut along the crease marks. And that lets me create a whole bunch of windows without laboriously ruling them all up. So we need to have about 10 buildings. Now we don't glue them down as we make them because the whole idea of this activity is we are trying to create a cityscape that has perspective so that some buildings that are, behind, that are a long way away will be behind and that we can kind of create and play with different aspects different buildings by putting some in front, some behind, making them not sitting all on a line but staggered and we can later work out which looks the best. So here you can see I've made these buildings previously. So all together I've probably made and I've used things such as rectangles and squares to create doors, windows, more modern sort of architecture. I've thought about art deco styles where we've got the lovely squared boat to ocean liner effect or a dome, something that we might find in Europe. I've also just played with things, like here I just want this building to go off the side and maybe just peek out at the back here. Um, the trick of this activity is we're not allowed to draw any lines, so all of our line work has to be just by cutting and layering different shapes on top of one another. We can use our ruler to measure shapes, but whatever we measure and draw at the back, when we cut it out, we need to turn it over. In a minute, I'll show you how to make this more complicated 3D looking building, which I know most of the kids really like to make. But it's good just to start with something simple like this one. A green rectangle. Just like that. And an orange triangle. Now, it is very important that our buildings are in proportion to our A3 paper. We don't want to make something that's too big for the piece of paper. And we don't want to make, when we roughly want to make the buildings all about the same as how we're going to stagger them and arrange them on our paper that's going to make the difference in our artwork. To make one of these buildings, we just need to select a bright coloured piece of paper. We can easily turn it around. So if I use the whole length, you can see it might, might be okay in A4 piece or an A3 piece, but I'm just going to make a building about this big. I fold it, crease it and then I'm going to cut along the lines. I 
can think about making the top of that of my building a little bit more interesting. A bit like those buildings you see in places like Hungary and Russia with their interesting towers. I fold it for symmetry, so whatever I'm doing on one side, I'm matching on the other. I can bring that around. I can pretty well get as creative in my architecture as my imagination lets me. So here we've got that building there, you can get it quite clear. So, as I said before, the, the problem we have today is making sure that we, any line work on our building, we can't actually, um, we can't draw, we have to create. So the best thing to do, for instance, if I want red windows, would be to use my ruler. Draw across, you could be more accurate and measure it. You practice your stuff to see if it looks okay. Go along there. And as I said before, we can fold, increase, fold, increase. off here time just for a sec. I'm drawing little fine lines on this paper and I'm cutting out long red strips. They're going to be my lines on my building. So I'm going to decorate the turret with little red lines. I only ever use my glue stick on the part I'm going to stick on. That way I'm only using the minimal amount of glue. And I'm lining it up to the edge. I'm going to come across here, picking up my piece, and cutting it. You can see before I was just trying to arrange my windows. Another bit of glue on this bit. Careful to make my lines parallel where they need to be. If you don't know what that means, it means the same distance apart all the way down. Down. And then we can arrange our windows where we think our windows might look good. I might put one up here. Yeah, nice and straight. I might decide to put my windows in a grid like my other buildings. Or stagger them. So they look a little bit like a lighthouse. This reminds me of some sort of tower. blue rectangle, orange rectangle, aqua rectangle, three black rectangles, and then I've cut even smaller white squares on top of that and glued them all together to make the effect of blinds or of lights in the windows, which is something we're going to be looking at when we're putting it on the blacks, because later we're going to be using a gel pen to create stars. Now this is always the popular building that people want to know, that students always want to know how to make. We start with a shape like this. So it's our square with a triangle shape. To create this, I've made a parallelogram. Now I need to line the parallelogram up, so let's move that out of the way so you can see it a little bit better, so that you can see it juts out. Put a little bit of glue behind that one. And we're just going to slide it over until it juts out and creates a roof line. Don't worry about the pink behind it, we'll trim that off later. Then we're going to I've got a square here. They're going to line that square up into this section right in here. Once again, the bit I'm sticking on, that's where the glue goes because we don't want to make a mess of our base. Oh. Line it up with the pink building. Put that on. With my scissors, I just trim it off. And 
now they're ready to go. This is the next part. It's just another rectangle, two lemon windows, and a grid of blue windows. So there's our grid, we can just cut them and then arrange them on our paper, and then away we go. And of course, a little blue circle. I do have some windows here. We can just arrange them any way we like. We can trim them down to match to be a little bit more. Same, cut, cut them again in half. It's up to you, you're the artist that you're building. So you can see the yellow windows. And voila, we've created another building. Okay, we're up to the next step now, and that is arranging our cityscape. So we've got all our buildings cut out, ready to go. And the idea is we're going to arrange them in such a way that they're overlapping. Like I said before, this will show perspective. The things that are closest to us will be able to see the whole building. The things that are further away will be obscured. Part of the picture will be obscured. This one in here, I'm going to line this one up. So it's just peeking out of my other buildings. Okay, so I've been playing and arranging my buildings, overlapping them. So I can't always see the ones behind. I've also made some little balustrades and rails and I'm going to select and put on my CD. Now before I glue this down, I'm also going to add some other elements. I'm going to make this look like a treetop garden. And I'm going to make a tree. The reason I'm putting it all down before I glue it down, so I can change it and work it out, and then I have to glue from the back towards the front, but at least I know where everything's going to go. I'll put some trees, some large trees over this side perhaps, changing the colours. Putting my little um, crease, making sure there's no pencil marks. See some pencil marks on that side. And I think I'm going to put one more tree in there just to cover that. And there's a little bit of glue on what I do with there. I'll put another tree in there. I can also make rails and all sorts of things. I can make seats. I can make street lights. I can do all sorts of things with my paper. But that's the last thing we're going to do. When we're happy with how we've arranged our city, we're then going to start to glue. Thank you.